Gimel. Gimel. Let me get rid of this recording thing here. Okay. The Sanhedrin was seated in the shape of a semicircle threshing floor so that they should see one another. Two judicial tribes stand before them, one to the right, one to the left, and they record the words of those who defend and those who convict. The Yehuda says three. One records the words of those who defend, one records the words of those who convict, and the third records the words um, both of those who defend and those who convict. Three rows of scholars sat before them, each one recognizing his place. First, they need to ordain. First, they they, they they ordain from the first row, one from the second row, then moves up to the first. One from the third row moves up to the second, and they choose one from the congregation and sit him in the third row. He does not sit in the place of the first, but in the place appropriate to him. How do they admonish the witnesses in capital cases? They admit them and admonish them, saying to them, perhaps you will say in conjecture or hearsay or testimony from the mouth of another witness or something, or something you heard from a reliable person, or perhaps you do not realize that we will check you through inquiry and examination. Know that capital cases are not like civil cases. In civil cases, a person pays back the money and receives atonement. But in capital cases, his blood and the blood of his descendants are his responsibility until eternity. For so we find what came who killed his brother, as it is stated, the bloods of your brother cry out. It does not say that the blood of your brother, but the bloods of your brother, his blood and that of his descendants, alternatively, the bloods of your brother, because his blood was splattered over the trees and stones. Therefore was man created singly to teach you that whoever destroys a single life of Israel is considered by scripture as if he had destroyed an entire world, and that whoever preserves a single life from Israel is considered by scripture as if he had preserved an entire world. Also, for the sake of peace among people, so that no man should be able to say to another, my father was greater than yours. And so that, that heretics should have no reason to say there are many powers in heaven. And to teach the greatness of the Holy One, blessed be he, for a man mints many coins from one mold, and they are all alike. But the King of kings, the Holy One, blessed be he, minted all men from the mold of Adam, and, and not from one another. Therefore, everyone is obligated to say, for my sake was the world created. Perhaps you will say, what need have we for this trouble? But it always been stated that he is the witness who saw or knew, and he will not attest. And perhaps you will say, what need we have we to incur responsibly for this man's blood? But it has already been stated, when the wicked perish, there is joy. Okay. Okay. Um, Perikai Mishnah Aleph. How you bod kin osso b'sheva chakiros? So the seven chakiros is an, inve is an investigation. Okay. Um, and this is to determine the, um, we'll say, well, we ask him the things specifically related to time, which Shavua, Shavua is not week, Shavua is a uh, year of the Shmita cycle. Right. Sorry, which, which Shmita cycle? All right, so th this is talking about a seven year period is a Shavua. Okay. Be'ezer Shana, which year of that Shmita cycle? Be'ezer Chodesh, in which month of the year? The Kama Be'kodesh, and what day of the month? Be'ez a yom and what day? Be'ez a sha'a and what and what hour? Be'ez a makom and in what place? Now these things are all necessary, uh, and and they're they're critical in in order to um in order to to substantiate the testimony. You have to give the time, the accurate time, and the place. Why? Because uh, because that is how you can have um hazama that is um con uh what's the correct word in english witnesses who are refu refuting witnesses right who can say how could you give testimony that you saw this at such and such a day and such and such an hour because you were with us at the time okay mm -hmm. now you know if they don't say what the what where they were and, and what the time was then how could the how could you have Ada hazama and if you can't have if and we have a general principle in 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 all uh, court cases that any testimony that cannot be refuted by other witnesses who can say you were with us at that time is not a valid testimony. Okay, mm -hmm. so so those things are absolutely necessary. You ha they have to answer them, and they have to answer them accurately. Rabbi Yossi Omer, Yom, Makom. He dispenses with all of the the, the details of like which seven year cycle, which year. Etc. It just it just says what day was it? What day of the month? Because uh, court cases do generally come quickly, and you know, we're not concerned about uh, you know which which Shmita cycle are we talking about? Heavens. So, but but the but the Chachamim say they want they want those things in there. 
because uh, you could you could have something that comes from a long time ago, and also we want the uh, the ability to um, to con to for the for the witnesses to be able to contradict each other, and um, and then and then their testimony is is basically invalid. Um, so he so, so Rabbi Yossi says just he just asks what day, what hour, and what place. Makirin Atemoso, do you know him? Um, he said, do you, in other words, um, did you know if, if it was the, um, if it was the, if, if it was like a murder case, I'd say, did they, did you recognize the, uh, the victim? Or maybe it, it could be, why? Because there's a possibility that maybe if the victim was an idolater, then, mm -hmm. it's, not, then it's not a capital case anymore. Because you don't, because you don't get a death penalty for murdering an idolater. Okay, his race symbol. Did you warn him? Important. Right. This is, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This says here that they, they want them about recognizing the victim well enough to determine whether it's certainty whether he was Jewish or a Gentile. Mm -hmm. that was... Right. Uh, a Jew only gets a death penalty for killing a Jew. Right. Yeah. Okay. His race symbol. Did you warn him? Right. He, he, it's not. A, it's not cap. If you didn't give him a proper hasra, then it's not. Again, not a. Not a capital case. Ha. Uh, and what if it's uh, and if it's uh, let's say a case of of somebody who's who who's being tried for idolatry, he asks the question: Is me avad? What 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 idol did he worship? Ubameyavad, and how did he worship it? Uh, because that's also going to be relevant. Um, for example, um, if if somebody had to defecate in front of Merkulis, that would mean nothing. That would just be a disrespect. That if you defecated in front of Baal Peor, that would be a, that would be the avoda. Okay, so that's so Rabbi Yossi disagrees with with the Chachamim on the on the times, and he adds in these extra questions. However, the the um, the the halacha does follow the Tanakama, I believe. Um, yeah, halacha is like the Chachamim. Okay, So the more they um, they increase the question of bedikos, the examinations. Um, we, the, we've got bedikos and we've got chakiros, which are different things. The chakiros are the ones we spoke about in the previous Mishnah, which is the, uh, which is, those are essential in uh, fixing the time and the date and, and, and the location. But bedikos is uh, surrounding questions, circumstantial questions to find out more and more about the case. The more questions they ask, the better it is. Why, why is that? Because, um, well, okay, well, we'll see that in, later in the Mishnah. There was a guy who was murdered under, under a fig tree. And, uh, and Ben Zakai, that, that is, would be Rabbi Yochanan Ben Zakai, um, asked the witnesses the, the questions of like, okay, well, how thick were the stems of the, of the figs? Like, what do you mean? Who, who, who knows? Who cares? Uh, it's not relevant to the case, but if they are, but if the witnesses contradict each other, then they're going to, then they're going to throw the case out because they say you weren't talking about the same fig tree. Okay. Uma ben chakiros levedikos. So what's the difference between a chakira and a bedika? Chakiros echad omer eni yodea edu san betela. If one of them says I don't know with the chakira, in other words, I don't know what time it was, I don't know what day it was, I don't know where it was, I don't remember. Okay, well, case dismissed because if you can't if you can't be held liable for hazama if you if you can't have rip because what he's doing is he's protecting himself against another aide coming and saying no you were with us at the time okay so if you if you if you're not prepared to take that risk on yourself then you're not uh, then your testimony is, is invalid okay so hakiros are uh, are essential he must answer and if he if he doesn't know it's uh, it's it's null and void because echadomer any yodea. If, so, but with Bedekas, if he says, "I don't know, I don't remember how thick the fig the, the fig stems were," uh, or "I don't I don't remember what color shirt he was wearing," any other, and even if both of them say we don't know, san that, that 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 doesn't refute anything. What does what does refute is if they if they give a definitive answer and their answers contradict each other. So and it doesn't matter whether you're talking about or bedikos if they contradict each other, then their edus is is void. Okay. So what happens if one says it was on the second of the month and the other one says it was on the third of the month? 
that's not invalid. Why? They, they didn't get the memo as to when Rosh Chodesh was declared. One of them thought that it was a two-day Rosh Chodesh and one of them thought it was a one-day Rosh Chodesh. So that's why they, so that's a, that's a perfectly uh, legitimate explanation as to why this one thought it was the second and this one thought it was the third. But that's as long as they're talking about the same day of the week. If they both say it was Tuesday, when the one says it was the second and the other one says it was the third, no, no, that's okay. Because then they just they, they just didn't know which was the day of the week. But, but if one says it was Tuesday and the other one says it was Wednesday, that is invalid. Okay. Um, but an, an, an error of two days is not acceptable because you'll never be out by more than one day just because you didn't know the Rosh Chodesh. Also, um, in the uh, in in parentheses over here, I mentioned in the footnotes. Um, this uh, this uh, off by one is only acceptable up to the middle of the month, up to the 15th of the month. But by the middle of the month, everyone knows when Rosh Chodesh was. So if one person says the 16th and the other one says the 17th, that's bar that's Bartel. One says it was in the second hour of the day. And the other one says it was in the third hour of the day. That's acceptable. Off by, off by one hour is okay because you know you, you, you they, they don't have wristwatches uh, you know, that are telling them the exact time. They can just look at more or less where the sun is in the sky, and if it's a cloudy day, you can't even see that. So you can just sort of judge by how light it is, and okay. So you're off by one hour. That's that's still legitimate. But if they're off by two hours, one says in the third hour, one says in the fifth hour, that's not valid. Rabbi Yehuda Omer Kayemes, he says, even off by two is fine. What? But, but if one says in the fifth hour and the other says in the seventh hour, that's invalid, uh, says, uh, says Rabbi Yehuda. Why? Because, because the, the sun is in the east and, the, and in the fifth hour, the sun's still in the east and then in the seventh hour, the sun's already moved over to the west. So you shouldn't, you shouldn't be making a mistake there. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so back to the beginning of Sanhedrin, first Mishnah. Monetary cases are judged by three. Cases of theft and bodily injury are judged by three. Claims for full damages and half damages, twofold compensation, and fourfold or fivefold compensation are judged by three. Claims against the rapist, seducer, and the defamer are judged by three. These are the words of Reb Meir. However, the concomitants say claims against the defamer are judged by 23 because they involve a capital charge. Cases of lashes are judged by three in the name of Reb Ishmael, and they said they said by 23. No, I'm sorry. Right, they said by 23. The intercalculating of the month is by three. The intercalculating of the year is by three. And these are the words of Reb Meir. If Shimitz ben Gimel says it has begun with three, discussed by five, and include, concluded by seven, if they concluded with three, it's still valid. The Samicha of the elders and the decapitation of the calf are by three. These are the words of Rav Shimon. Rav Yehuda, however, says by five. Kalitza and refusal uh, are by three, or before three, and the fourth year fruit and the Maestro Shani, whose value was unknown, are judged by three. Redemption of articles by Kekdish are judged by three. Assessments of movable objects is by three. If Yehuda says one of them must be a Kohen, and that of real property is by nine, and a Kohen, and likewise for a human being. Okay. Rabbi Matziah Yud Gimel. If a ground floor and an upper story be going to two people collapse, and the owner of the upper story demanded of the owner of the, up, of the ground floor that he rebuild, but he refuses, the owner of the upper story may rebuild the ground floor and live in it until he reimburses him. If Yehuda says, even this one who lives in his neighbor's property must pay him rent. Rather, the owner of the upper story rebuilds both the ground floor and the upper story and puts a roof on the upper story and lives on the ground floor until he re reimburses him. Similarly, if an olive press which is built in a rock uh, on a, built in a rock with a garden above it, it partially caved in. The owner of the garden may go down and sow the seeds until below until the other makes a, a dome for his olive press. If a wall or a tree fell in public domain and damaged, he is exempt from 
pain. If they gave him time to cut down the tree or to demolish the wall and they fell but within the time, he's exempt after the time he is liable. If one's wall abutted another's garden and it fell and he said to him, clear away your stones, to which the other replied, they're yours. We do not listen to him. If, if after he accepted, he said to him, here, take your expenses, I will take what belongs to me. We do not listen to him. If one hires a laborer to work with him in stubble or with store, and he says to him, give me my wages, to which the other replies, take what you have done for your wages, we do not listen to him. If after he accepted and said to him, here, I take your wages, and I will take what belongs to me, we do not listen to him. One who puts more out in the public domain may do so uh, only if the one who puts out puts it out puts it out, and the one who fertilizes fertilizes immediately. We may not sow clay in a public domain, nor um, nor may we make bricks, but we may need clay in the public domain, but not bricks. One who builds in a public domain may do so only if the one who brings the stone brings the ones who builds. Builds immediately, and if he causes damage, he must pay for the damage. And Rabbi Shimon Ben Ma'il says even. He may even prepare his work days. Okay. Tomorrow we'll uh, go oh. to Basra, yeah. I'm sorry, which one? Baba Basra. Basra. We're back to that. Okay. Okay. Get in. Okay, get in. Salad fest. If one divorces his wife because she is an alone, who says he may not take her back? Look at the common say he may take her back. If she was married to another and had children from him and she demands her kasuba, Rabbi Huda says, he says to her, your silence is better for you than your speech. If one sells himself and his children to a Gentile, he is not redeemed, but the children are to be redeemed after the death of the father. And one who sells his field to a Gentile must buy and bring first fruits from it for the sake of the general good. Victims of damages are paid by assessing for them the inferior fields, lenders with the fields of medium quality, and the woman's kasuba with fields of the poorest quality. Reb Meir says also a woman's kasuba is paid with fields of medium quality. Okay. Uh, sukkah based Zion. Sukkah. A person who had his head and most of his body inside the sukkah and his table inside the house, the Shammai invalidates. The sukkah and Beis Hillel um, validates it. Said Beis Hillel to Beis Shammai, did it not happen that the elders of Beis Shammai and the elders of Beis Hillel went to visit Rabbi Yochanan, the son of the Koronite, and found him sitting with his head and most of his body inside the sukkah and his table within the house, and they said nothing to him. Beis Shammai replied to them, is that your proof? Actually, they said to him, if this is how you have always conducted yourself, then you have never in your life fulfilled a sukkah. Women, slaves, and minors are exempt from the sukkah, and a minor who does not need his mother is obligated to dwell in the sukkah. It once happened that the daughter-in-law of Shammai the elder gave birth, and he removed the plastic cover, a plastic cover, a roof, and, and placed cock above the bed for the child. All the seven days a man must take his sukkah, make, make his sukkah his permanent boat, and the house his temporary boat. If it rains, when it is permissible to leave, then the porridge becomes spoiled. They illustrated this with a parable. So what is this comparable to a slave who came to pour a cup for his master and poured the jug at his face? Rachas, give him all the base. They buried the dead and returned. If they are able to begin and, and finish before they reach the line, they should begin. If not, they shall not begin. Those standing in line, the innermost are exempt while the outer are obligated. Women, slaves, and minors are exempt from reading the Shema and Tefillin, but the subjects are the obligation of Tefillin and Mezuzah is to, and to recite great of grace of meals, after meals, grace. Okay. Dalad, a Balkari a bel a bel needs mentally and does not recite the blessings before or after it. On food, he recites the after blessings, but is not blessed before. And Yehuda says he blesses before and after them. Right. So remember, there was Sakanas Ezra regarding the Balkari, um, that he was not allowed to learn Torah until he went to Mikvah. Um, but uh, that was a, it was a Gezerah yeah. that uh, that didn't stick. So we've got a lot of Mishnayos that have to do with the, the halacha of a Balkari not being able to learn Torah, but uh, that's not the halacha. Okay, Tamid, base, base. Uh, 
Oh, okay. They begin piling up the ashes on top of the mound. A mound was in the center of the altar. At times, there was something like 300 core of ashes on it. In the festivals, uh, they would not remove the ashes from the altar, but because it was an adornment for the altar, and in its days, the Kohen was never lax in taking out the ashes. They began bringing up logs to raise the fire of the pyre, but all the woods valid, are all the woods that are valid for the pyre? Yes, all the woods are valid for the uh, pyre, except for that of an olive tree and of a vine. However, with these woods, they were accustomed, and with branches of a fig tree and a nut tree and of olive oil. Um, the Kohen arranged the log pyre toward the east, and the pyre's face was toward the east. The heads of the inner logs would touch the mound, and there was space between the logs where they would kindle the chips from there. Okay. One That's more. us for today. Okay. So, thank you very much. Yeah. Have any special plans for today?